Yo guys, how's it going? AK Moto here. It is the Friday. It is the Friday. It is Friday, the day after Halloween, and we are going to be cleaning up the 125 here in the background. Not sure if you could see it, but the 125 is back there somewhere. It is extremely, extremely, extremely muddy. Uh, from last weekend riding, I had a ton of fun, but it is really, really messy. So we have that to clean up. So we gotta clean it up, fresh oil, fresh filter, give it some more gas, lube up the chain, bleed the forks, the list goes on. So we have a lot to do the bike today. And we also have to mix some fresh brapple juice back there in the gas can. Let's see if I can find it. 12 seconds later. I'm pointing to it right there, yeah, right there. Two hours later. The gas can, so we gotta make some fresh grapple juice to go into the bike, and uh, yeah. So if you guys are curious on how I keep my bike absolutely immaculate, spotless, unlike how it is now, but that's kind of the opposite of how I keep my bike. But if you guys are wondering how I keep my bike so clean, this is gonna be the video for you, because I am gonna be completely running through I'm going to be completely running through my complete entire process for washing the bike. So uh, yeah, you guys can keep your bikes looking as clean as mine is in the background. And uh, yeah, so hope you guys enjoy the video and let's get right into this. Alright guys, so as you guys can see the bike is absolutely destroyed. Now it isn't that bad the way it is sitting here right now because a good majority of the mud has fallen off when it's like moving around the garage and stuff. But as you guys can see, it is definitely pretty dirty. So we're definitely gonna have our work cut out for us today. So uh, yeah, let's get this bike moved out of the way and I'll show you guys what I use for cleaning the bike. All right guys, so here are the bare necessities when it comes to washing a dirt bike. So here we have a big bucket which you could fill up with water. Here we have some Dawn dish soap for cleaning the bike up. Here's some tape which you use this to cover up the exhaust on your bike as well as any air box holes or anything you don't want water getting into. Uh, here we have a sponge which will be used to just scrub the bike down alongside the Dawn dish soap or any dish soap really works. Uh, some towels for drying down the bike as well as a plastic bag here basically this is just to cover up your air filter so you don't have to change it um, although I would recommend changing the air filter every time you do wash your bike if it's in good condition you could just cover it up with this bag and you won't have to worry about any water getting into your air box alright guys so here's pretty much everything I use to get my bike nice and clean on a daily basis so over here we have a really nice washcloth that I got from AutoZone not sure what the actual brand is but it's worked well for me. Uh, any Amazon washcloth or uh, actual uh, microfiber towel should work fine. You kind of have to experiment, see which brands work the best. Uh, over here I have some Maxima Cleanup. This is a chain cleaner, but you can also just use Dawn dish soap and water in a spray bottle, which is what I've been doing recently. Uh, here we have some Maxima SC1. This is a coating for the plastics. Sometimes I'll use it, sometimes I won't. But this actually coats the plastics really well and makes it really nice and shiny. And if you throw some of this under the fenders, it'll actually help keep from mud sticking the underneath of your fenders. Here I have some Lucas Oil Slick Mist. This can be used on your trim and your tires. I mainly use it on my tires though. On the sidewalls, not the complete tire though. This stuff works pretty good when it comes to the sidewalls of my tire. Tires. And then here, this is just a little brush or a, a little uh, sponge thing that I use to put on the uh, tire shine. Here we have like a, a Scotch Brite pad, an SOS pad, I don't know what they call these, but you can get them at HEB or Walmart. And basically I use this to clean up some of the metal surfaces. Nice thing about these pads is they don't really scratch anything or scuff anything, so that's nice. We have some toothbrushes. Uh, I'll generally use, these aren't new toothbrushes, these are used toothbrushes. But uh, basically, what you can do is you can recycle your old toothbrushes and use them to do things like clean up your chain or just harder to reach areas. Uh, a sponge, again, this sponges work really, really well when it comes to scrubbing down your bike. Um, you just gotta fill this up with Dawn dish soap and it will do an amazing job of scrubbing on the plastics. Here, I have a Twin Air Airbox wash cover. It's worked really well for me. Basically, this goes in the spot of your air filter 
So you'll take off your air filter, install this, and this will make sure no water gets in your air boot. And then here we have an exhaust wash plug, which takes the place of what tape would, uh, just to block off your exhaust from get water getting into your exhausts. Here we have a spray bottle with water and on dish soap. Uh, this works really well as so just a general purpose cleaner. Back here we have some simple green, and this stuff is what I use on any really, really heavy oil, grease, uh, anything that just does not want to come off of the bike. And then contact cleaner, which I'll also use on places like the airbox. Uh, again, where it's really, really oily, and uh, just water and Dawn dish soap won't really do the greatest job. Now, in addition to all that stuff here, I have a simple just spray nozzle for a garden hose. Uh, it would be nice to have a power washer, but I do not have one at the moment. Uh, but this garden hose has worked fine. The only time that it would be nice to have a power washer is when you're really cleaning down a muddy bike, which we are today. But as you can see, the nozzle here has a shower, which I use most of the time. Flat, which is really nice for cleaning the chain, jet, center, uh, cone, all these different uh, settings, which makes it really, really nice for cleaning up the bike. But uh, yeah, guys, just a normal garden hose here, no crazy power washers or anything like that. And uh, yeah, that's what I use for my water source. All right guys, so first we will begin with removing a seat. Uh, in this case, it is just two 10 millimeter bolts. Most Japanese bikes will just have two bolts at the side. They are both 10 millimeter. And now we can simply remove the seat. All we have to do is pull it up here at the back and then push down at the front. Whenever I'm washing my bike, I always like to wash it without the seat on because you can get into a lot more of these hidden areas and nooks and crannies that you can't get to without the seat on. And I also like to wash it off the bike to make sure I'm taking really good care of the seat foam. Alright guys, now we're simply going to remove the air filter here. And we want to be very careful not to drop any large dust or dirt particles, even grass particles, into the air boot. We definitely don't want any of that stuff to be going into our engine. And now we're going to be cleaning the rim of where the air filter seats with a little bit of Maxima Contact Cleaner. Uh, this just helps to get any of the filter oil residue off and make sure we have a clean surface. And it also kind of helps the uh, air box wash cover see a little bit better. Now if you want, you can get a clean paper towel or a rag and just kind of stuff it into the air boot. So if your airbox wash cover does let a little bit of water leak through, that'll catch it all. But I'm pretty confident in my airbox wash cover's abilities to uh, keep the water out. But for demonstration's sake, I'll throw that in there. Just don't forget to take that out once you're done washing the bike. All right guys, now that we have our airbox wash cover in place, we're just gonna reinstall and hand tighten our seat bolts just to keep our number plate side panel pieces in place while we're washing the bike. And now we're gonna install our exhaust plug just to make sure, again, no water gets into our exhaust. All right guys, so first we're gonna do our first spray down, which is just gonna be straight water. As you guys can see here, I went ahead and removed the sprocket cover just so we can get back in here and to clean all this gunk and rocks and stuff out. Uh, make sure none of this stuff stays in here. 
and mess up our chain and sprockets really quick. guys so I got the bike all sprayed down and a little bit of water and on dish soap and now we're gonna rinse it off one more time So now to clean off the chain here, we just have our water and dish soap mix, as well as an old toothbrush, and these work really, really, really well for getting in and cleaning the chain up. So I'll just go section by section and listen to how the chain sounds now. You can see it sounds pretty crusty, a lot of dirt in there. So uh, yeah, let's fix that up. Take me back to another sunrise, back when all I ever needed was by my side. Alright guys, so we got the bike all washed up, uh, wiped down real nice, but unfortunately as you guys can see behind me, I have ran out of daylight. So uh, we're going to be picking this back up tomorrow morning, uh, but real quick before we completely just shut it down for the night, I'm going to go in 
and uh, lube up the chain just so it doesn't rust and then throw some MPP on the exhaust so it doesn't rust either. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be picking this up tomorrow with um, washing the seat. We're gonna have to throw in a filter. Uh, we're gonna have to check the coolant, bleed the forks, check under the fork dust seals for any dirt. Um, what else? We're gonna have to swap out the transmission fluid and uh, yeah. So we have quite a bit to pick up on tomorrow, unfortunately, but that's all right. Um, no big deal. Uh, yeah, there's not much we can do when we uh, run out of daylight and the shop lighting right now is pretty limited. So uh, yeah, guys, uh, let's get the chain lubed up, get the exhaust coated and some anti-rust stuff and uh, yeah, just shut it down for the night. guys so I opted to put a new plug in the bike because after all the other one does have 87 hours on it which is quite a lot of hours for a spark plug it's not horrible I'm sure you can get more out of them but I just opted to put a fresh iridium spark plug in there so that one should be longer lasting should keep a little bit cleaner than the stock one and uh, yeah just a little upgrade over the stock one so uh, yeah let's we'll go ahead and button this back up and swap out the oil go there's one click I believe there's two and there's a second click
Alright guys, so we finally got finished up with the 125 back in the background. Um, oil change went a little messier than it should have, to be honest, because I've done oil changes a million times, but I just started messing with the stuff when I was doing it, and uh, yeah, but you know what, that's alright. Uh, we got the bike completely ready, fresh, cleaned up, and uh, yeah, today I was actually hoping to go riding, so uh, yeah, let's quickly clean everything up, and uh, back up to go riding. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I tried to put together a pretty good video for you guys, but um, yeah, I, this video wasn't quite as organized as I would have liked it to be, but uh, yeah guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.